talk about the magic line of lenses. What is the magic boundary line? It's kind of like when you cross the state line. <laughs> you cross the state line and then you roll down the window and you go, I hear banjo music. <laughs> <laughs> there is that magic line in photographic lenses. doesn't matter who makes them. That magic line is basically 28 millimeters. What magically happens? Because I get asked this question all the time. Um, people say, oh, why are you highly recommending this high element count prime lens that's got like 12, 10, 13 elements in it? Um, you know, you, you never recommend that. I said, because it is a ultra wide lens. Now 28 millimeters is not ultra wide, but the borderline for this, and by the way we're going to talk about who makes what lens really good, really bad, and I've mentioned this before. I've also told you a thousand times that all lens design is a trade-off. All. To get these near distortion free low vignetting lenses like um, uh, the one that I'm always praising, like the Fuji 16 millimeter the Fuji 16 millimeter is absolutely effing incredible. That lens is so good, it should not even exist. The lens is just unbelievable. Also, getting back on this topic, but first talking about who makes what and good and bad. I've got tons of Zeiss lenses. Zeiss ultra wide lenses suck. I love Zeiss to death, but Zeiss lenses below 28 millimeters, they suck. You should never buy them, period, flat out. Even the ones that are made in Germany, like the 15 millimeter. Zeiss does not know how to make a really good ultra wide lens. Who is God of ultra wides other than that one Fuji lens? Okay? I'm talking about primes here, by the way. Primes, not wide angle zooms. I'm talking about primes. The the people that rule the world in uh, ultra-wide lenses, not Canon, not Voigtlander. No, Voigtlander doesn't either. By the way, the uh, Casino Voigtlander, they're basically all made by this. Yeah, Casino Voigtlander. Why do you think that a lot of the Zeiss lenses, most of the Zeiss lenses are made in Japan? You'll notice that they're basically the same construction. They got the exact same anodizing. I think they send the anodizing to the same plant. Zeiss, Voigtlander, no bueno on the ultra-wides. Same is true on Canon. Primes we're talking about. Nikon rules the world when it comes to ultra-wide primes. Even though the recent ones are Chinese or Thai made, and they have plastic bodies and they're G-series, don't care. You have to deal with it. The 20mm 1.8G Nikkor, the 24mm 1.8G Nikkor, which is a recent lens, those lenses stomp the hell out of everybody else. They stomp them. Now, Fujifilm, I have their 14, which is decent, but not great. Their 16, which is a recent production. Oh my God, that lens is orgasmic. Whew. Damn. Damn you, Fuji. That lens is unbelievable. Um, but people ask me, say, how can you so highly recommend these high element count lenses? And the only high element count prime lenses that I recommended have been lenses that are below the borderline of 28 millimeters. All lens design is a trade-off to compensate for the distortion and the uh, vignetting. Everything below 28 millimeters is a trade-off. Has to have. That's why I answer that question all the time. People think that I'm actually contradicting myself, and I say no. I'm talking about 35 millimeter or 28 millimeter, basically the same, 28 millimeter and above. Yeah. Then we're talking about low element count prime lenses that are divine. Just because it's a prime lens doesn't mean it's divine. Just because it's a low element count lens doesn't mean it's divine either. But I'm talking about 28 and above, below 28. You have crossed the borderland into the banjo playing. You know, it's like I hear banjo, <laughs> I hear banjo music, and that's the that's the borderline of lenses, where, unfortunately, you have to do the 16 millimeter actually does not have bad micro contrast, even though it's a high element count uh, prime ultra wide lens. That is what you sacrifice. Okay, you can actually take uh, like the 18 millimeter Zeiss, which is a full frame lens. It's got bad vignetting. It's got really good micro contrast. It's not a high element count lens. I have that lens. It's rather expensive. But by sticking on a crop sensor camera, but unfortunately then on the crop sensor, it's not an 18 millimeter anymore. You can get really good micro contrast, but then it's not a real landscape lens anymore. So that's an issue. 
But that's the borderline. All lens design is a trade-off. When you cross underneath 28, all games are off. It's either an awesome prime lens. Really, there's no middle ground on the ultra wise. There is not. There's there's uh, well, there are there are in the zooms, but the zooms a different category. Um, like the uh, the uh, Fuji a 10 to 24 is actually very good. It's actually even better than Fuji's 12 to 24. Fuji's 12 to 24, excellent lens. Is the Fuji a better lens than the 10 to 24 than the Nikkor 12 to 24? Oh hell yes, it is. Especially in autofocus speed and quality of construction, absolutely a better lens. Not only that, it's cheaper. It's made better. It's made in Japan. It has better output. But that's a zoom. So there is no contradiction. I just point this out because I keep getting that asked that over. And uh, what's his face, uh, Yosef um, from uh, Serbia? I can't remember if he's from Serbia or Croatia. He's gonna smack me because I can't remember where he's from. I think he's a Serbia. But that's the actual answer to that. That's the borderline. That's the uh, magic line of demarcation. Um, all lens design is a trade-off, and you have to deal with the high element counts in the ultra-wide lenses below 28 millimeter. And that's the way it is. It's the nature of optics, and you have to have a different set of standards. You know? If someone is teaching kindergarten students, there's a different set of rules as far as teaching than if you're teaching a bunch of high school punks that are, you know, smoking dope or, you know, whatever the hell they're doing. I mean, you have to have a totally different approach to teach in high schoolers as you do to kindergartners, and you have to have a totally different approach to evaluating lenses above 28 or 35 millimeter than you do the ultra-wides below 28 millimeters. So I had to point that out. Did I repeat myself a few too many times in this video? I probably did, and someone will slap me for it, and uh, that won't be the first time. Okay? I like that nice t-shirt the guy sent me from Canada. So I'm not really angry. Everybody keeps calling me angry for talking. He's angry. That's probably the best thing they say about me. They usually call me a, a, a fat, bald uh, a-hole or something like that, in which case I laugh. Um, doesn't matter what people call me. Who gives a damn? I've been called everything in the book. Who gives a damn, you know? What's the ancient saying? It goes, I'd rather be, I'd rather be hated and right than liked and wrong. Ha, 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 ha.